This is a Reconstructionist radio production. Please visit calcedon.edu to download or purchase this book. The Philosophy of the Christian Curriculum, Russus J. Rushtuni, Ross House Books, Vallecito, California. Part 4 Chapter 6 Whose Child? A basic question which must be faced in order to give perspective to education is one of ownership. To whom does a child belong? Status educators have acted in terms of their answer to this question, and we will fail to grasp the implications of status education if we miss their often plainly stated presupposition that the child is the property of the state. Harold Benjamin, formerly a professor of education and the director of International Educational Relations, U.S. Office of Education, 1945, was candid in his statement of the status argument. We can, he held, come to grips with the problems in education by asking a few questions. One of these questions was this, quote, What shall be taught, and for what purpose? End quote. Benjamin, in his own way, wanted changed lives. Quote, the end products in education should be human beings who have been substantially changed by their years of schooling. End quote. The goal of education is, quote, to make, quote, normal, end quote, persons, end quote, of the pupils, according to Lyman Bryson. What constitutes a normal person and what changes should be made in the child, the state and its education shall determine. Van Cleve Morris tells us plainly that education, and every aspect thereof, must be either man-centred or God-centred. He then declares, quote, If it is man-centred, then education should encourage the open and curious mind to inquire into and challenge any idea it chooses, trusting that, quote, truth will out, end quote, in the end. If education, on the other hand, is essentially God-centred, then there will be certain subject matters which the child must learn of necessity and which lie beyond the reach of question and individual judgment. Since they are authored by God, not man, they do not have to be investigated or discussed only learned in and for themselves. You can readily see that here is a region where a great deal of educational dispute originates, where knowledge and truth are the, quote, stock in trade, end quote, of the school. Where knowledge and truth come from, then, God or man, bears directly on how this basic, quote, commodity, end quote, is retailed in the school, end quote. Morris's own faith in man is apparent from this statement, he ascribes an open mind and a trust in truth to be the man-centred faith. In actual fact, all positions are more or less closed to other positions by their presuppositions. The man-centred faith has a closed mind where God is concerned. It believes that, quote, truth will out, end quote, from man-centred sources, not from God. For Morris, the premises of humanism are naively assumed and never fully questioned. Morris does recognise, quote, the ultimate moral nature of education, end quote, and he calls education, quote, a moral enterprise, end quote. His view of morality, however, is humanistic. If humanism governs our perspective, we will answer the question, to whom does the child belong, in one of these three ways. First, the older, individualistic humanism, while stressing the individual, was still respectful of the family. The child was thus seen as the property of the family, in ancient pagan humanism, as in Greece, Rome and China, this was especially the case. Ancestor worship was a common expression of this form of humanism. For us as Christians, the family is the basic institution in society, but the family is the trustee and steward of its children, not their owner. There is thus a vast and basic difference between the humanistic and biblical views of the family. Second, the child can be viewed as the property of the state. This view is basic to the philosophies of statist education. It is especially pronounced in all forms of Marxism, national and international socialism alike. The child is a state resource to be developed and used for the welfare of the state. It was the development of this view of man as child and adults as properties of the state which led to the development of state control of education. We cannot understand the governing philosophies of statist education apart from this premise. Third, there is the view 
held by existentialists and anarchists, that the child is his own lord and owner, and not under state or parents. This view was popularised in the 1960s by the hippie philosophy. It is influential currently and is behind attempts to legislate a child's bill of rights. The playboy, quote, philosophy, end quote, is also strongly behind this perspective. All too often, conservatives defend the first view as if it represents a valid alternative. The fact is, however, that a biblical faith requires us to declare that we are God's property. Psalm 103. Sheep are property to be used as the shepherd determines. We and our children are alike God's property. Thus, our lives and our schooling cannot be for our pleasure or profit, but for the glory of God. What does this mean practically? First, it means that the focus of education is not on the child, nor on the parents, nor on society. It is on God. Education is thus primarily theological, God-centred, not vocation-centred nor knowledge-centred. Because of the biblical doctrine of calling or vocation, the Christian school will strive to excel all others in preparing its pupils, but the focus will be on our necessary service to God. Because God's revelations give knowledge, and because knowledge is an aspect of God's image in us, we will seek to surpass all other schools in this respect also. Our focus, however, will be on the competent and faithful service of God. Second, worship and prayer will be a basic aspect of the school because the students must never forget that all their schooling must serve not only themselves but primarily the Lord. In Psalm 119, we see the psalmist drawn ever closer to the praise of God by his study and his meditations thereon. Prayer and chapel in the Christian school should stress the absolute property rights of our Lord over us and our learning. Third, the school must seek to develop increasingly its freedom from and independence of state controls, state standards and state accreditation. The root word in accreditation is credo, I believe. If the state is our Lord, it is the state's approval and imprimatur we seek. If Christ is our Lord, it is the accreditation of his word we seek. Increasingly, states are seeking controls over Christian schools and churches. They are demanding the right of lordship, accreditation and licensure. This we must resist. The Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network brings to you a complete lineup of podcasts where you will hear practical and tactical theology. Our desire is not simply that you consume our shows, but that you also live out your faith in every area of life. We can talk all day long about these things, but if we fail to put them into practice, then we fail as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, our King. Subscribe now to your favorite Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network shows, or you can subscribe to the Reconstructionist Radio Master Feed, where all of the content we produce, including the audiobooks and audio articles, will pop up as soon as they are available. And don't forget to visit reconstructionistradio.com to volunteer as a narrator or to partner with this ministry financially. May the Holy Spirit stir you into action for Christ and His kingdom.